So the major challenges for global agriculture this century is the growing world population. Estimated to reach 9.7 billion by the time we get to 2050. This is a large number of people that we will need to feed. And although we had the Green Revolution in the previous century, we need to go through what we could call a second Green Revolution in order that we can produce sufficient crops to feed the world. Photosynthesis is this incredibly complex process. It has about 170 steps and a lot of sub-processes within it. And it's really important because it takes light, sunlight and CO2, carbon dioxide, from the air to make food. It's what makes food. So photosynthesis is like a factory. It can only be as fast as its slowest step. And we have identified some steps where there's not enough machinery. Essentially, we have bottlenecks. So what we're doing is we're giving the plant more enzymes and more proteins that will work as that specific machinery is required to overcome those bottlenecks. When we overexpress or introduce these genes at the same time, we get increases, significant increases in biomass. On the field conditions, on the real agronomical conditions, we're getting up to 27% increase in biomass. Crop breeders are excited by just 2% increases in biomass and yield. 2% is a, is a very large amount of food. Where we're seeing 27%, this is, this is massive, so it would really go some way to producing the food that's needed by 2050. One unexpected and quite exciting result was that for every carbon that the plants take from the environment, they use less water to do so. And this has implications for farmers across the world as they'll be growing crops in a droughted environment given climate change. And this may go some way to provide the tools that they need to alleviate the stresses that they'll face in the future. With a growing population, we're going to need to feed an extra 2 billion people in 30 years. This will have a huge impact in food production one day. 